We are live. Hello. Hi, Royals. Hello. All right, so we are live now. Hello, hello, hello. I'm trying to set this up quickly. How are we? Hi, everyone. Okay, so we are on. We are on. Hello, hello. Let me just quickly go live on the podcast. Greetings, greetings, royals. Hello. How are the royals? Hello, happy Friday, happy gratitude Friday. Hello, everyone. Hi, happy Friday. We are live. All right, so we are live on our Facebook page, Instagram page. And we are on on the podcast and inspiration for you podcast royals. We are live and ready. Hello everyone. Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon to others. Hope you're all doing great royals. Hope you're doing great. All right. So this is Rati Shalom. We are live and ready for an inspiration for you recap royals. As you all know, it's every Friday we have an inspiration for you recap. So we are going to be looking at the inspirations for this week. We are going to be looking at the inspirations for this week. And um, as we get ready to look at the inspirations, I hope you did have a beautiful week. I hope you had a, an awesome week, Royals. You born, you took charge. You know, and I hope you are, you know, seeing progress in your life. You are making progress and you are growing. That is the most important thing, Royals. Okay, so we are here to grow. We are here on earth, you know, as God's representatives to be the best versions of ourselves and, of course, to grow. So how are you where you are? This side it's called... We are in winter, it's really cold. Okay, so let's look at the inspirations for this week, Royals. So we're looking at all the inspirations that we shared this week on our platform, like Writer Shalom, where we share daily inspirations every day. So we're going to be looking at the inspirations for this week. How were the inspirations like? What did we learn out of the inspirations for this week? And what is it that God wants us to do in terms of developing ourselves, in terms of becoming better, you know, like you all know, an inspiration for you is all about personality development did you listen to the inspiration for you recap for last week either on the podcast or on our youtube channel or maybe in any of my social platforms facebook and instagram because the videos are there i tell you these are the the, the videos that you really don't want to miss reals because they help us they personally help me and i get blessed by them and you know i get to see a lot of things that i need to change how to be the better me and so on i'm sure if it can actually work for me it can work for you as well right so thank you for participating thank you for listening thank you for watching even later i noticed most of the people watch the videos later which is very okay I am grateful for that. Even if it's one person that watches or listens, it's something, right? So that's how we grow. You can't just wake up and you are up there. So it takes patience, time, and so on. So now let's look at the inspirations for this week, Royals. Um, how was Monday like for this week on an inspiration for you? And then the inspiration says, don't, 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 okay? It says, don't complicate things in your life, real. God created you to live a life without burdens of any kind. Therefore, don't invite 
any into your life you are meant to enjoy your peace take it easy on you okay so it's gentle this week right <laughs> let's see don't complicate things in your life so please do not complicate things in your life royal okay don't complicate things in your life it says god created you to live a life without burdens of any kind therefore don't invite any into your life so god created you to live a peaceful life a life without burdens you may say okay right what do you mean a life without burdens when we are in this world that is full of trials tribulations challenges listen what does the Bible say? It says, count it all joy when you go through diverse tests. So it doesn't matter whether there are challenges in your life or whatever. God wants you to enjoy. He doesn't want you to live in burdens. He doesn't also want you to invite them. So it says, don't complicate things. So when you say you're complicating things, it could be maybe the way you think. It could be the way you do things and so on. Now, Let's see. It says you are meant to enjoy your peace. Take it easy on you. So wherever you are, as you are listening or watching Royal, you need to take it easy on you. Okay. You might have been thinking too much. You might be having so much thoughts in your mind. Like, you know, you have been so negative in many things. Or you might have been thinking like so deep, you know. And, you know, sometimes what we even think of is not even there. We are the cause of like chaos sometimes because we bring things into our mind. You know, we create some drama into our mind, some chaos into our mind. And before we know it, all those things are happening. So now listen to what the inspiration says. It says, learn to be calm, be at peace. Take your time when thinking about something. I love this part. It says, be calm. Be at peace and take your time when thinking about something. This could be anything at all, right? It could be about your business. It could be about your partner, your spouse, your, you know, in your marriage. It could be about your, your friend. It could be about anything at all, whether about your life and so on. Just be calm. Be at peace. Take your time when you are thinking about something, okay? Or making a decision on anything. So when you are making a decision, in your life on anything at all take your time be calm you know don't use those calculative um thoughts like you know you you put this and this together and you know most of the times you you notice that the things that you are thinking of are not even there they are the worst enemy of you you think you assume you know you assume this person is thinking of this. You assume this person is like this. You assume they are acting this way because of this. You assume they are not giving you contract because you assume like all those things. You you bring in like so much of, you know, chaos in your mind because of assuming. Because of thinking, overthinking. Yes, you call it overthinking. Like you are overthinking, royal, overthinking of things that are not even there. And by so doing, what does what happens? It confuses you. It stresses you, right? You can be the case of confusion when you choose to think in a complicated way. Do you know that? Do you know that, Royals? You can be the cause of confusion when you choose to think in a complicated way. And this is very true. You know, you can think in a very complicated way, Royal, and you are like, okay. And at some point, you can even see that, you know what, I think I'm just being extra here. All right. So, especially on assumption or when you carry or do what is bigger than your capabilities. Okay. So, sometimes we assume, we assume people do not like us. We assume, we assume, sorry, that people do not care. We assume things are not working because there's a case somewhere. We assume uh, doors are not open because uh, there's a grandfather, there's a grandmother somewhere doing something, you know. Like, by so doing, do you know all those things, they now cause confusion. You assume you are where you are because... Um, like people are not giving you opportunities and so on. So we assume so many things. Then it says take your time. So that means you need to take your time when you are thinking. 
Take your time when you are making decisions in your life. Take your time. Be calm. Be at peace. God wants you to be at peace, Royal. God wants you to be at peace. And you know, um, and then the expression says, God wants you to function like Him. How does God function? You can ask yourself that. And you know, the answer is in your Bible. I always tell you this. You want to know how God functions? You want to know how God runs His, his projects? You want to know how God does His work? You know, you will see it's in the Bible. I like the person of Jesus. I like the character of Jesus. If you read about Jesus, or maybe you, you watch some movies, you know, that at least talk about, you know, uh, that shows us a little bit of the character of Jesus um, as per reading the passages in the Bible. You will notice something. Jesus was ever come. That was the personality of Jesus. And then he says, you are a royal priesthood. You are a chosen generation. So that means he wants you to function like him. Look at what happened when he was calming the storms. I mean, the storm when the disciples were panicking. He calmed the storm. He was at peace. He was sleeping. The Bible says that he was, you know, he was sleeping. He put his head on the pillow, resting at peace. And then it talks about how he walked on the water. That was Jesus. He was a very calm guy. He was a very peaceful guy, regardless of the situations, the circumstances. There's a way he thought. There's a way he did his things. There's a way he judged. There's a way he, you know, he would conclude on situations. Like he was not that a fast guy, you know. He was not a, a manipulator guy. He was not a naughty guy. He was not. He was always calm and steady. There's a way he could <clears throat> deal with situations. You know, right? So God wants you to function like him. He wants you to have authority and work according to his pace. And use his wisdom. Okay? So God wants you to function according to his pace. You need to find out how, how does he function according to his pace? How does he do it? You will get all the guidance in the word. The word of God will guide you so that you can know how to apply the wisdom of God, how to have knowledge, understanding, and so forth. That is how God wants you to function, right? When God created the universe, he was not in a hurry. Nothing or no one was chasing him. That was Jesus. Jesus was not in a hurry when he created the universe. You know, I took some time to, you know, there was a time when, I think it was like last weekend, when we had like a family, nice, beautiful family discussion. And we're talking about so many things, you know, arguing here and there, but it was beautiful. So now there's there's something that, you know, I was not really conscious, conscious of it, although I knew about it, you know, um, talking about just the universe itself. I remember my brother was like, you know what? God is so big. You know, he's so big. There's so much about, you know, I mean, he was talking, he was just saying the universe is so big because he's another character actually, you know? So I was like, you know what? I want to take some time to really look at into this universe that God created. I took out the world. We can imagine looking at some documentaries, looking at, you know, those that went into, you know, space, those that went into the outer side of the planet, you know, those that took their time to really do some research and, you know, have a look at how the planets are and so on. I was so blessed. Just to the thought, it just revived me. That the thought of the beauty of who God is, like how beautiful God is, how beautiful the universe is, how he created everything without chaos, royals. And I'm thinking, if he's saying, when God created the universe, he was not like, he was not in a hurry. Nothing or no one was chasing him and he was not in competition with anyone. He used his creativity while he was in a good, peaceful state of mind and focused don't rush royal so when you look at the bible 
And God says, you are created in my image. You are like me. I created you like me. So that means he's telling you, Royal is telling us, he's telling you and me that, listen, you are so neat. There's something that is special about you that I put in you. There's a way you can create in a very unique way, but you have to be calm. You must be at peace. Just think of everything that he created in this whole world, how beautiful it is. Look at the universe. Look at the beauty of it. He was not in a hurry when he said let there be he was not in a hurry when say let us create men in our likeness in our image he was not in a hurry when he was creating the stars when he was creating the planet he was not in a hurry at all now he's telling you that he wants you to be calm when you are creating anything about your life be in a good state of mind okay Talk about, you know, think of how you want your destiny to be like. Think of how God wants your destiny to be like. So you also think like him. You create like him. He gave us the mind. He gave us the gift of mind. So that means he knows what he gave us. He gave us a very beautiful, powerful, you know, machine to use. To use to create. Now, he doesn't want you to be in a hurry. He doesn't want you to compare yourself with anybody. He doesn't want you to compete. He doesn't want it at all. He wants you to be in a good state of mind. He wants you to be peaceful. He wants you to be calm. Relax your mind and be at, it says, <clears throat> excuse me, it says relax your mind. Be at peace and do life the godly way. I love that part. It says do life the godly way. It's easy and there's no pressure at all. Of course, there's no pressure when you do your life the godly way. There's no pressure. You will not be competing. You know, when there's, when there are days whereby you feel like, you know what, I'm really under pressure. You know, I feel like a little bit of anxiety is trying to kick in. I feel like a small depression is trying to kick in. You know, the moment you think of God, you think of how God is, you will become. Okay. He wants you to live, to live your life his way. And there's no pressure at all. Don't do complicated things that will complicate your tomorrow, okay? So don't make decisions that will complicate your tomorrow. Do things godly way. There are things that you know when you do, they will really complicate your life, right? They will complicate your tomorrow. Don't do them, you know? Don't do them. There are so many things that people do that at the end of the day, it complicates their destiny, complicates their life, it complicates their tomorrow, their family, their family, it complicates their children and so on. So you don't want that. Be calm. Be calm, Royal. Okay, so let's look at the Tuesday one. Um, Let's look at the Tuesday one, Royal. So God wants you to be calm, Royal. Take your time when it comes to your life. I know sometimes we're like, it's, it's taking long. Like, you know, I should be having this by now. I should be this by now. But be calm, okay? Be calm, Royal. God is working on you. Expressing, that's the Tuesday one. says, expressing your emotions is not a weakness, Royal. I loved this one as well. It says, expressing your emotion is not a weakness, Royal. It's okay. Listen, it says, it's okay to talk to God about how you feel and to express it to someone you trust. That is, if you feel you, you, uh, if you feel you want to talk to someone, don't pretend to be fine when you are hurting from the inside. Okay, this is very important. Right, I was talking about expressing your emotions. You need to talk about em your emotions. If you're not okay, you're not okay. Well, stop pretending to be okay when you're not. It's okay to cry to God. It's okay, it's okay, Royal. It's okay to express your anger to God. It's okay to express your feelings, how you feel your, your emotions. It's okay to do that. There's nothing wrong about you crying. There's nothing wrong about you, you know, showing how sad you are, you know. You express it to God. You are not happy. Tell God you're not happy. You're not happy. Of course, you're not happy right and also if you can get somebody to talk to go ahead and do that talk to somebody about how you feel it's okay doing so is not a weakness one way or the other we are humans we will cry yes we will cry you will cry you will laugh you will be sad all those things will happen but does that make you weak of course not 
Let's listen to what the inspiration said. We live in a very judgmental world, a world that has a lot of competition, comparisons, and a proof, a point attitude or behavior. And then the inspiration says, fear of what will people say has caused damage. It says it's caused damage to the lives of many in the name of I must pretend I have, I have, I have it all under control. You know, there's so much pressure in this world. There's so much pressure in communities. There's so much pressure in families. There's so much pressure royals in societies. There's so much pressure around us. There is so much pressure in the world. Now, there's this thing of I must pretend I'm okay when I'm not. This is one of the reasons there is a high number of suicidal cases, mental cases, depression, anxiety, stress, prisoners, drug addicts, and etc. That mostly result in diagnosis of many sicknesses. Say no to pressure. You need to learn to say no to pressure, royals. Okay? You need to learn to say no to pressure. Do not allow anybody to put you under pressure. If you are not emotionally okay, you are not. Talk about it. Don't be scared about how they will laugh at you. You say, Ooh, my status. I'm a pastor. I'm a CEO, I'm the boss, I'm the leader, I am a celebrity, I'm this, you know, they shouldn't see my weaknesses. Listen, you will be damaged from the inside when you do that. Okay? Besides a title, apart from a title, apart of you being anything in this world, you are first a human. Okay? It's how you present yourself to your world that will make them judge you according to your outer image. It is how you present. You know, there are people who really want to, who want people to really respect them. You know, they show up, they want to carry that personality, that huge personality with those titles, such that when you look at them, you will just, you will feel like, you will see them and say, wow, this was their own first problems in their life. You will look at them and like, oh, you know what, this was their own first problems at all. There's a, there's something that I noticed on one of the social platforms you know which it really got into me do you know that um like for example the people that we look up to it could be mentors celebrities and so on you know we expect them to be in a certain it's there on the inspiration in a certain way and so on i'll tell you what happened there's this particular guy he's a very he's an actor he's a you know a, a big guy like as far as i know He's, a, he's an actor. He, he has done well for himself. And, you know, he has done well for himself. But now something happened to him. He, you know, life happens, Royal. It doesn't matter what title you have. Life happens. It could be like a, 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 I mean, a, a bomb in your marriage. It could be a bomb in your finances. It could be a bomb in your career. And so forth. So now this guy, I think he had a challenge in his marriage and so on. Then he found himself, like, I don't know whether they divorced and so on. So much happened. Now, this guy started something. It's a very minor project, a very minor thing to do, you know, on one of the social platforms. And people are bashing him. Like... We thought you are a role model, we thought you are a mentor, we thought you are this. And they are really after the guy, like hitting him hard. Now this got into me, I was thinking, okay, do you know that as, I mean, society or people can really kill you, royals? Just because I am big or just because I have a title doesn't mean that I do not make mistakes. You should know that. Just because a person is a certain, in a certain way or has got certain things or they are pastors or they are leaders, they are whatever, or they are models, I mean, are role models, coaches, mentors, doesn't necessarily mean that they cannot make mistakes. And just because we expect high on them, the moment they do something that is small, we begin to degrade them, downgrade them, talk them down, do anyhow. You know, do you know such things can cause suicidal? People can die because of that. Pressure becomes too much. So now what does that mean? 
I don't understand that when somebody is in a situation, you expect them to still behave giant, I mean, like in a giant way, like they are the Goliath from the inside. Even Goliath at some point was knocked down by David. You know that, right? So what makes you think that because you see people in a certain way, you expect them to be, you know? I don't understand our world. That has to change, Royal. Maybe as you are listening or you are watching, you could be that one kind of a person as well who is very judgmental. You look at people and you judge them with the outer look. Do you know there are people who are really big from the outside, but they are small from the inside. They are kids. They are babies from the inside. They are children from the inside. You know, people take time, I mean, take time to grow. But because we judge them, we like, you know what? So... This is for, like, remember, an inspiration for you is all about personal development. Listen, this is for everybody. It doesn't matter the title that you hold. You need to stand up for yourself. Stand up for yourself. Don't care who says what to you. Mistakes happen. Anything can happen to you. You are human. If you feel you are down, talk about it. If you feel you want to cry, cry to your God. If you have somebody who can understand you, talk about it. Tell them, express yourself, dude, this is what is happening about me, with me. This is how I'm feeling. This is what, talk, open up. This is how you heal. This is how you get better. Don't expect people to be giant just because you feel you are giant. And as far as you're concerned, you are also maybe going through your own stuff. But don't judge people that way, royals. Whether it's a celebrity or whatever, people before their celebrities, before their pastors, before their leaders, before their anything, CEOs, business owners, entrepreneurs, whatever, they are humans. Let that sink into our heads. They are humans. Okay? So let us stop this thing in societies, in, 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 in this world, that we judge people. That is why people go in for drugs. And then tomorrow, you are wondering why are people into drugs? Why are they into depression? Why are they into, I mean, I mean, going through anxiety and so on? It's because of pressure. It's because of pressure. So as an individual, stand out for yourself. It's how you present yourself to your world, right? We have taken that. If you are a role model, a mentor, a coach, a teacher, a celebrity, a pastor, or any leadership position, the world expects you to always be on top of your game. And you are expected to have everything under control as if you are not allowed to express your emotions. Listen, don't be fooled by, by anybody. Express your emotions. Talk about your emotions. I know with men, men like to hold themselves and they get hurt from the inside. Can you imagine? You are human before you were anything. Talk. Talk to somebody before things get so bad. Okay, talk to somebody before things get bad for you. Cry if you have to cry. That's why we have secret places. I don't know about you. You should have a secret place with God where you really pour out your tears. It's okay. By the time you're done talking to God, you will see you'll be relieved. Why do you think God put tears into our eyes? It doesn't matter what position of leadership you hold. Your career, I mean, uh, your career, etc. Whether in government or your community, your company, you name it, you can be a millionaire or be well known in the entire world. It makes no difference. You are human, you have emotions, don't pretend. So do not pretend. If you're not happy, you're not happy. Do not pretend. You know, when it comes to governmental leaders, that is why we have so many leaders in governments that make mistakes and boy, they end up making wrong decisions, doing things anyway, because they are like, God, if if the community, if if the, 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 the people can find out this, what's going to happen? So now they make stupid decisions, stupid, uh, uh, I mean, come up with stupid ideas on the table and so on. And it ends up affecting everybody in, the, in that entire country or in that entire city, in that entire, you know, uh, um, what do you call it? In that entire core area or community and so on. Why? Because you're like, what will people say? Expressing your emotions is not a weakness. Jesus Christ himself wept. It's in your Bible, John eleven thirty five. but he didn't reduce his status or stop him from accomplishing his mission. Are we not talking about Jesus today? Is Jesus not well known? Don't we heal through the, I mean, using the name of Jesus? Don't we preach because of Jesus? We are talking about Jesus today, but Jesus wept for Lazarus when he heard that he's dead. 
that was expressing his emotions that told, tells you that he, he he was human he had to express his his emotions right because remember his coming was for the fulfillment of the scriptures and also to help us to rescue us so now even though he was a spirit being he was also human he had to express the human part of it hence he died but it didn't end there he rose again from the dead and he where he ascended to heaven right but he expressed what was that for to tell you it's okay to cry it's okay to express your feelings okay so that is really important right i feel like this inspiration is so powerful in terms of you know talking about us how we need to express ourselves because we we are really going through a lot royals do you know why you can go to the hospital and you are diagnosed with so many some funny sicknesses in your body and you are wondering there's this thing head can cause sickness brokenness can cause sickness why don't you talk to somebody if you if you feel you want to talk to a counselor talk to a counselor if you feel you want to talk to a therapist talk to a therapist if you feel you want to talk to a psychologist go ahead and talk to a psychologist if you feel you want to talk to a pastor talk to a pastor if you feel you want to talk to a leader you want to talk to your your closest person you know of course but make sure it's somebody that you know when you talk to you know tomorrow they'll not wake up and start laughing at you and so on because we need to be sensitive Private is very important private and confidentiality is very important right so look for the right person to talk to okay look for somebody let's look at the wednesday one i need to try to be very fast right now that was really so powerful it's for somebody you might be going through some stuffs right now you might be going through some stuffs right now royal please talk to somebody okay talk to somebody and that's why we have this platform as well so you know if you feel you know i really need somebody to talk to okay we are here we can help you we can help you you know that is why we have an inspiration for you. It's not just about talking about inspirations. This is a platform for counseling. This is a platform for prayer as well. And so all those things will be introduced later on. But what I want you to understand is that that is the purpose of an inspiration for you to help us. Okay. So let's look at the words. So what, what you think is difficult to do, someone is doing it. Okay. What you think is difficult to do, Royal, someone else is doing it. It's about you giving yourself time to learn how to do it. The universe is full of creativity and God is looking for that person who is willing to discover his creatives with the help of the Holy Spirit and also teach others. So listen, Royal, what you think is difficult to do, somebody else is doing it. What is somebody else is doing it? The difference is that the person is investing taking their time, they're investing in their time, learning. So the universe is full of creativity. God is so creative. It's got a lot of things that are very creative, real, and he's looking for those that are willing to learn. Okay? God is looking for those that are willing to learn. So let's read Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Call to me, and I will answer you and tell you and even show you great and mighty things things which have been confined and hidden which you do not know and understand and cannot distinguish just call on me so there are things that you want to know about creative things royals god is saying call on me i will show you those things it's only god who can do that Royal. this is beyond going to school this is beyond so uh, learning and so on because remember in everything that you learn there has to be that extra unique creativity and that extra unique creativity you can only be shown uh, i mean can only be shown to you by the person of the holy spirit there has to be something in your life that makes you outstanding there has to be something in your life that makes you unique that makes you beautiful that makes you you know like different from the rest of others we all have got that one thing that makes you outstanding right if you can only humble yourself and understand that this whole creation is God, he will show you what you know nothing of. Uh, read Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 in many versions. So try to read that scripture in many other versions, okay? Bible um, versions. 
So if only we can humble ourselves, if only you can humble yourself, Royal God will show you so much. You can never take God's position. You can never replace his power and neither can you compare yourself to him. So this is a problem. There's actually a small problem. Let me just say small problem because if we can say big, it cannot be bigger than God. There's a small problem. There's a small problem. You know, in this world, we have people that feel they are actually like the masters themselves of this world, of this life. They feel they have it all under control. They feel they honestly do not need God at all. Why? Because they can do it themselves. They feel there's nothing that they cannot do. After all, everything that they have, everything that they, I mean, everything of who they are and so on is because of them. Or it could be like certain gods that they may worship. Yet God says, we should worship God only. There shouldn't be any other gods except him. And also, even your mind, if you're not careful, it can be your God. Do you know that your mind can make you a God? And you will feel like you are everything in this world. You forget that. God is the creator of that mind. There are so many things that we will, we can research, we can test, we can discover, we can try as much as we can. I'll tell you, not everything, we're not going to find everything in this world. There are some secrets about God. There are some hidden things about God that when you, the moment you become, like uh, the moment you, you, you are full of pride, the moment you're full of yourself, you feel like, ah, there's no such thing. God hides those things. It says you can never take God's position. You can never replace his power and neither can you compare yourself to him. The least you can do as his creation is to submit yourself to his learning so that he can reveal himself through you. So the secret is you want to know more of God. You want God to show you his creativity and you also want to know like his uniqueness about your life, about the world, about everything. The secret is to submit yourself to his power, to submit yourself to his authority, to submit yourself to his kingship, to who he is, right? God created you in his likeness with the purpose of you representing him here on earth. So he created us in his likeness with the purpose of us representing him here on earth. So if we can submit ourselves to his authority, to his power, if we can listen to him, you know, he can teach us many things. He can show us. No, it says not to, uh, not to challenge him or replace him. The only reason you will know 1% about this creation is your pride, which is the reason why God couldn't work with Lucifer and had to pull him out of his business of creating. We need to know our place. That's what the EHT says. With the person of the Holy Spirit, nothing is too hard to learn. Don't limit the abilities of God in you. You are here to discover and to help others discover the secret is humanity. So it doesn't matter what you do, what field you are in, what you're involved in. If you want to discover, submit yourself to God. If you want to know more, if you want to be the best of you, if you want to be different, you know, submit yourself to God. He will teach you. He will guide you. He will show you. That's why he said, I will leave you with the Holy Spirit who will teach you all things, who will be your teacher, your God. Holy Spirit is so powerful if you can submit yourself to him. He will teach you his uniqueness. He says, call upon me and I will answer. So call upon Jesus. Call upon God. He will answer you regards to anything that you want to know. Anything at all. So learn those things that you think are difficult. Somebody else is doing them. There's another person who's taking his time to really 
listen to the Spirit of God and they are receiving answers and they are becoming better. They are discovering things. So God wants to discover things through us. I mean, God wants us to discover things and He wants us to help others. You know, those that are in the darkness, He wants them to put them into the light. So you as that light, He wants you to submit yourself to Him so you can learn and you help others. So the least you can do is to submit yourself. Let me try to be fast right now. Let's look at the Thursday one. I'll be very, very fast right now. Precious stones are hidden in far and deeper places, Royal. If you want to have them, you need to travel some miles so that you can dig deeper to find them. And such are the gifts of the Spirit. I mean, such are the gifts within you. Search deeper. What you're looking for is inside you. We have everything inside of us, Royals. And then, what does the Bible say? It says, guide your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3 to 4 says, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having expect the corruption that is in the world through lust. Okay, God has already given you all things, including his power, which is the ability to search and find real. Okay, so God has given us the ability to search and find. On this assignment, you can't depend on your physical eyes and your intelligence. You need the person of the Holy Spirit. We have shared that already, right? When you are, what you are admiring from the outside is within you. Places you think you can't reach, you can. And the gifts you are trying to get are already within you. Search deeper. You are a partaker of the blessings already. All you need is knowledge, understanding, and wisdom to find where they are. Travel some miles within you without using the geographical location because it will limit your faith. The gifts of the Spirit are within you, royal. Travel within says travel within so you need to travel within god has given us the gifts of mind god has given us the gifts of the holy spirit god has given us the gifts of the spirit but he wants you to search him within okay so there are precious stones within you search within don't use the geographical location because your faith will be limited you are very big royal don't be moved by this now condition. Don't, don't be moved by your status right now. Don't be moved by anything. You are big. What did God say to Abraham when he said, look at the stars? He said, as far as your eyes can see. So what do you see when it comes to your life? What do you see when it comes to your children? What do you see? When it comes to your marriage, what do you see when it comes to your ministry? What do you see when it comes to your purpose? What do you see when it comes to your business? What do you see when it comes to your family, your life, everything around you? What do you see? Search within as far as your eyes can see. So now let's look at the Friday one. It's Gratitude Friday. I have to be very fast right now. I think we've really taken much of the time. Gratitude enlightens and empowers you. It says gratitude enlightens and empowers you, Royal. It connects you to the right people at the right time. And it breaks any kind of limitations. Be grateful to God at all times. Okay? Be grateful to God at all times. It says gratitude enlightens and empowers you. So gratitude is so powerful like that, Royals. It enlightens you and it also empowers you. Gratitude is God's, it's God's power. Gratitude is God's light. Okay. So it says, gratitude to God is your force. So your gratitude to God is your force, Royal. It enlightens and empowers you. It also connects you to the right people at the right time. And it breaks any kind of limitations in every area of your life. That's what gratitude does. Gratitude is beyond saying, God, I thank you. Gratitude is worship, real. Your gratitude to God can enlighten you. Your gratitude to God can empower you. Your gratitude to God can connect you to the right people at the right time. 
Your gratitude to God is your total surrender of His Lordship. Through your open gra your gratitude, He reveals more of His uniqueness and he, an he answers difficult questions you may have. You can worship God with your gratitude. Your gratitude to God is your covering. It's what benefits you, not Him. It also benefits those around you. Be grateful to God. Right? So gratitude benefits you, not God. The more grateful to God you are, the more you receive his covering. The more you are enlightened, the more you are empowered, the more you are enlightened, the more you even get connected to the right people, God directs you to the right people who have what you're looking for, who can guide you. You know, there's so much that gratitude can do for you. You can worship God with your gratitude. Your gratitude to God is your covering. It's what benefits you, not him. We've taken that. Why are you grateful to God for this week? Well, count your blessings. So gratitude is that powerful. Gratitude is your form of worship to your heavenly father. You can worship God with your gratitude. And with that gratitude, he can direct you the right way. He can enlighten you. He can guide you. He protects you with gratitude. And he connects you to the right people. Have you ever, like, had a question in your life and you're like, God, I don't understand, there's something. And then, but with your God, God, I'm grateful to you because I know you answer my prayers. I'm grateful to you, oh God. With your gratitude, he can direct you to that person that you need at that time. So gratitude is powerful. Gratitude is beyond, you know, just saying thank you. So there's so much on gratitude, real. So what are you grateful to God for? So whenever you show gratitude to God, make sure you are ready for it. Be in a good state of mind. Show your gratitude to your heavenly father at peace. All right. So those are the inspirations for this week, real. Before we round up, you know, on... um like everything, I would like to talk to somebody who may be listening to me, maybe on the podcast or you're watching on our YouTube channel or maybe you're watching on Facebook or Instagram, you know, as you're watching you're like, wow, this is so powerful you know, but I don't have a relationship with Jesus, I don't have a relationship with God, I don't know God like that you know, I would like to lead you with the prayer of salvation. This is the reason why we have this platform as well. So that we can help those that are not born again. Who don't have a relationship with Jesus. So you may be listening to me or watching and you are not born again. I would like you to say this prayer after me and mean it with all your heart. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 10 now that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, it says that you will be saved. So what he wants is you to give your love to Christ. I would like you to say this prayer after me and mean it with all your heart. Say, oh Lord God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Your word says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right now, I ask Jesus to come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit right now. I declare that I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father, for saving me. I'm born again. I receive remission of sins into my spirit i'm a new creation from this day in jesus name amen well congratulations royal if you have said this prayer right now you are born again don't hesitate to contact us send us an inbox dm us send us an email whichever way you want to i mean however you want to get hold of us you can get a hold of us through our platforms and we can guide you on your new journey of faith now that you are born again. All right, Drell. So congratulations, congratulations, congratulations once again. All right, Drell. So that is all for today. This is Rati Shalom. You know, I love you all so dearly. So this is an inspiration for you. Recap, Royal. So you know how we do it. We share inspirations every Monday to Friday. We come back together. We look at the inspirations. We do the recap. And they are available on our podcast on Spotify on an inspiration for you podcast. And on our YouTube channel at Fountain Insights TV. And we are also on these platforms at Rati Shalom. We are available on LinkedIn. We are available on Twitter. We are available on Instagram, on Facebook. Yes. We are on all the social platforms. And yes, of course, 
you know how it is we have a blog on week size we have a blog so you can also get us well, I read the blog on our um, website. All right, so that is all for today, Royals. I love you all so dearly. Enjoy your weekend. Have a beautiful weekend. Have fun in Christ, and don't forget to uh, forget to go to church on Sunday. Okay, so make sure you go to church on Sunday. God loves you, and He wants you to be at peace. I love an inspiration for you. Why? Because it helps us, Royals. It helps us develop ourselves for better. And become the better versions of ourselves, isn't it? So, so remember, you are a royal person, you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. God loves you so dearly. Enjoy your life. Smile, put a smile on that face. All right, have a beautiful, beautiful weekend. I love you all once again. This is Rati Shalom. Enjoy your weekend. God bless you.